Hi, this is Tom with the Knoxville Academy of the Blade, and I have my cool study and steel shirt here. Hi, Aaron. Um, love me because I'm wearing your shirt. But the actual reason I'm here is several people have asked for a review of this broadsword. This is the Academy of Historic Arms Scotland uh, redesign of the Hanway Practical Broadsword. They've done a lot of work to it. Uh, if any of you are familiar with the original Hanway broadsword, it had a very pointy tip, uh, a very thin edge, and uh, a variety of issues with between the balance point and blade construction and everything. And the people at the AHA Scotland have fixed a lot of those. This, if you look, has a rolled tip, and it's actually it's fairly stiff. I would not want to get hit by this um, without some sort of padding or rigid chest plate. Uh, it is much stiffer than a rapier or anything like that, but I would put it in the same category as a rolled tip fetter in terms of how hard it hits in the thrust. The edge, uh, if you can zoom in or, or come closer here. Got it. The edge here is quite wide, especially down here. Uh, this is gives it a very, very sturdy presence in the parry. And then as you go up here, the edge thins out, uh, but not still doesn't get too thin. It's still thicker than your average rapier blade or, uh, or saber blade. And so you have a very sturdy parrying surface down here that then gradually thins and narrows so you have still have a very dynamic handling weapon. The basket down here is... Uh, First off, it's kind of neat um, because it's a replica, as I, as I understand it, it's a replica of Rob Roy McGregor's basket hilt, which being a history nerd, I think is kind of cool. But the important part about it is it feels very solid. It's very, very well constructed. Um, I'm not really worried about it breaking. I know being a basket hilt, it's going to break eventually, you know, you start beating on this thing and these welds are gonna are gonna fatigue and they're gonna break eventually but it doesn't feel like it's gonna do that anytime soon and I've subjected it to some pretty harsh treatment up to and including fighting against fetters with it and if you can come closer or zoom in here on the hilt right here you can actually can you actually see this on the camera okay uh, you can actually see here where it took a strike straight across the basket and uh, has actually bent this front front plate a little bit, uh, but that's about it. And I know the guy who did it, and he's fairly strong. And for that to be all that, that happened, I know on a, uh, the synthetic basket hilts, for instance, that would have dented that front piece in very, very significantly. It's taken several other significant hits. Uh, there's a couple of indents here on the pommel, on the loops up here, and, th and in different places and it still feels quite solid. The grip inside is a simple leather wrap, but it's, uh, it's a good quality leather. It doesn't feel slick in the hand. Even using it barehanded for drills, as my hand gets sweaty, it, uh, it doesn't feel like it's gonna, gonna slip out of my hand at all. Which is good, considering it's a very heavy sword. It's on the upper end of weight for historical basket hilts. It weighs right at 1,500 grams, making it the heaviest one-handed sword I own and outweighing my Dinelli Armory's Schiavona by a good 200 grams. That weight is balanced out somewhat by the fact the blade is only 32 inches long and it has a balance point of right at about 3 inches in front of the guard. So despite the weight, it's still a very nimble sword and I don't feel like you have to fight it at all because of the taper both this way and the taper this way it's a very agile sword it has again a, a, a lot of weight and a lot of mass to move around but because of the mass the balance point and the distribution it doesn't have terribly much inertia provided you're not trying to like swing it with the basket first because that's not going to work as far as dynamics goes, like I said, it feels very agile in the cuts. It's very quick in the thrusts, which is really good, and 
honestly quite rare in a, a basket hilt type trainer despite the low balance point despite the weight it's actually not that hard to manipulate here in you know some any sort of proper thrusting position it's not that hard to go from a guard into a thrust either and moving from guard to guard across up around it's very agile and again despite the weight it handles very well uh, right when I got these I got one of the early production runs so I got it a little bit cheaper than they are right now currently the last price I saw quoted was 450 plus you know any applicable shipping and tax and things and honestly for the quality of the sword uh, for the the durability and the general handling I'd say 450 is definitely a fair price, especially compared to a lot of custom outlets and things where you'd be looking at six to 800 for probably a, a nicer broadsword. But if you need one on a budget, if you need one for class use, then this is probably the nicest inexpensive, comparatively inexpensive steel broadsword I've ever handled. So. I would definitely recommend it uh, if you can pick one up. They're a lot of fun to use and they have really improved my understanding of how a lot of the material for the Highland Basket Hill is actually intended to function versus how saber adapted material uh, is intended to function. And it, because of all the mass down here again, it really, this weight really drives home how this comparatively heavy weapon can still be quite agile and move quite quickly and easily.